an update here on how many customers are now without power. This just refreshed. Yep. More than two million people are without power. Yeah. Uh, Center Point Energy. Yeah, we, I was, okay. was going to just say that, that yeah, to Kate, yeah, guy. so he's, they've got him, um, they've got him harnessed up, and so they're the, bringing him The on. guy on, they were talking about the guy who was on 288. Yeah. Video, yeah. Or? Uh, I don't know, let's see if we can grab it right okay. now. Yeah. But anyway, he is safe, I promise, he's good. Um, yeah, we saw we him. We just he's, wanted to see it. Just yeah, well, I, I know, I know, we want to make sure everybody's okay, right? Please yeah. don't yeah. do that. Like, I right. yeah. can't stress enough, please but don't I mean, do that. 2.1 million people without power. Nuts. Haven't we now exceeded the number of people who didn't have power in derecho? We have. I'm glad you brought that up because that's where I was going to go. It's like you set me up there, Amy. Well done. Uh, yeah, we did. Here's the thing, though, is it remember that the derecho had less than I think it was like a million five or something like that. But we were talking about, you know, full infrastructure rebuild because it was damaged so significantly. Uh -huh. I think a lot of what we're seeing with these and I, and I don't want to minimize any of this here, but I think a lot of what we're seeing with some of these are breakers that got tripped. Yeah. Transformers that got popped real quick mm -hmm. and they're all sort of the kill switches, right? And so they'll go in and should be able to turn those on fairly quickly. Okay. We hope so. We hope so, right. And it's not going to be for everybody. I don't want to yeah. be Pollyannic about this here, right? Yeah. This, that's not going to be it. But I don't know that we're looking at something that's going to last like two weeks to a month like what we saw with right. the derecho, yeah. right? There will still be some spots that unfortunately are going to take a while for that to happen. Um, but I would be willing to bet that once the storm goes out, and here's the other reason too, is because aside from some of the minor damage we're seeing crews will be able to get out to some of these spots very quickly mm -hmm. versus you know we were talking about significant power lines that were down remember the active lines that were on the north loop yeah that shut it down for hours right right so the crews yeah. couldn't even get in there at that point so I don't know that that'll be the case but we'll see I, I'm gonna go glass half full on this here hopefully for all of you that do not have power if you're watching us now either on your laptop or if you're watching on your phone or if you're watching on an iPad thank you for staying with us I really do appreciate that as well and at the end of this year, I'm going to actually show what the weather is for the next three days. I know we've completely ignored the 10 day forecast, but this was the most immediate need. Now that we're starting to slowly back things down, I think we can get back into that as well. We'll do that over the next couple of hours here. Here's the newest advisory. It is now down to a tropical storm. So that's certainly good news. Notice that the icon has changed. It is no longer that thick red. Now it has the donut hole in the center. That's an indicator of a tropical storm just to the west of Bush Intercontinental. So that's going to continue to move north at around 13 miles an hour. And the max winds right now are still at about 70 miles an hour as well. Our Galveston cameras have been kind of struggling all day today, but just trust me, it's still very frothy down there. Uh, Owen can tell you that. They've been driving around, but this is an improvement too. Last time I talked to you, our wave heights were at 9 and 11 to 12 feet. They're now down to 8 to 10. So an indicator is that that storm kind of pulls and it takes all of those heavy rain bands away from us. We'll start to see some of the flooding that we saw in the bay eventually slide back on down into the Gulf. It's going to take a couple of hours for that to happen, but at least I think by late afternoon, we're going to be looking at a much different and much better picture for Seabrook, Laporte, Bayou Vista, all of these areas that have been seeing some flooding today. Love to see this, that there is nobody out there on the Southwest Freeway. This is our Empower Pharmacy camera from right here at the KPRC2 studios uh, and the feeder roads at this point, this is right outside of the station here. That's Bissonette and uh, Gessner's. So Gessner's back over this way, but it looks like these feeders are okay for folks that if you are and you do have to get out or for whatever reason you need to get something very quickly to a gas station or an area that's open, uh, looks like at this point that you certainly can do that. So that's certainly good news. We'll take that. Caroline, do you want to throw that uh, connector on for me, please? Thank you. I forgot I turned that off. Uh, we've got a tornado warning over towards Beaumont. So I want to start with that uh, just to get an idea of uh, what we're seeing. Other than that, most of what we've got out here still these flash flood warnings that you see across a chunk of the area from the woodlands down towards Pearland were placed south of there uh, with aerial flood advisories. Look at this right here. This I'm going to put this in motion because this I think is important to see uh, this heavy rain band during Harvey. This is what we were tracking all through the night. Frank and I, I believe it was that Friday night. Um, and this was located right here from Lake Jackson, and it was ripping away across parts of Fort Bend County around Needville, Siena. Thompson's were getting hit with wave after wave of not only heavy rain, but there were multiple tornado warnings that were popping out with that. I, I remember it distinctly that night. Thankfully, we're not seeing that now. And in fact, 
Notice as we go uh, west of the storm here, let me back this out and kind of slide over this way, uh, from College Station over to Navasota, the center of the storm, and I'm gonna put that in quotations because there's not much left of it at this point, is right about here, Northwest Harris County. So if you jump in a little tighter, Cypress, y'all are in the eye, or what's left of the eye at this point. Still looking at probably some gusty conditions here from Rosenberg, Sugarland, Mission Bend, over to West U, moving on up into the heights where we have seen some damage from Montrose up towards 26th Street, but in terms of the heavy uh, rainfall at this point. Now that's starting to thin out, thankfully, right outside of Channel View towards Pasadena, there's Galena Park, and then over towards uh, Taylor, uh, Clear Lake, and League City as well. So all of these areas from the port to Baytown to Clear Lake on down towards Kima and Dickinson, all of that water that's been pushed in is going to start to recede, but it will take a couple of hours for that to happen. So just be patient if you can. Sliding over towards Winnie, notice that the heavy rain, and right now we've got a tornado warning. Let me put a stop on that for folks. If you've got friends out that way, Southern Liberty County or just to the west of Beaumont is just slide over onto the uh, east freeway there. That's for Jefferson County and that's until 11 o'clock. It's going to be probably very similar to all of these. At these there is some rotation to this, uh, but we're just not seeing uh, anything that would that would, you know, attend to at this point of a, um, you know, major tornado outbreak. We're definitely not seeing that. And thankfully, all of this continues to press northward, too. So if I put this back in motion here, over the last hour, notice that all of this is sliding north at about 12 miles an hour. So we're almost done. A couple more uh, hours of this and we should be a okay once this is out of here. Uh, that'll have a much better looking forecast. And in fact, a second ago, Caroline showed you the future track here. I'll show it again if you missed it. Um, most of this by two, three o'clock will be sliding up across parts of Madisonville, sliding over towards Trinity Crockett areas, Nagadoches over to Lufkin, down to Beaumont and Port Arthur, and then up to Tyler. And then once this gets caught, there's a trough, sort of a dip in the jet stream up here across northern Texas. And so this is why the storm is not going to get blocked. Remember during Harvey, we had an area of high pressure here. We had an area of high pressure here. And then we had the trough way to the north. And so all of that got blocked. That big high that was in West Texas for Harvey is over in Las Vegas. It was 120 degrees in Las Vegas yesterday. So that's where it is. So there's just nothing but a highway for this thing to get caught up in. And once it does, by Monday into Tuesday, it's long gone. There's a chance that we could get some of these outer bands to refire by late tomorrow afternoon. So I don't want to say that we're out of the woods just yet, but I think a majority of that will be down around the coast by tomorrow afternoon and into tomorrow evening. So 